is Rene Bernard, and I'm working for the Cost of Excellence Neurocure and also for the Quest Center of the PIH. And I'm going to tell you today a little bit about protocol depositing using protocols IO. So, but first, uh, let me start with uh, saying when is really a good time uh, to start uh, using protocols IO? Well, you should have a rough idea about your protocol, so the sections should be worked out and uh, you should have made up your mind whether you have just one protocol or maybe a collection of protocol as this is uh, important for the setup. So even without a really complete protocol, it would be advisable to get to know this platform because knowing some of the features and uh, how to uh, find your way around it and what it actually can do will help you uh, designing your uh, protocol or improve it. So we recommend uh, the platform Protocols IO. There are others like Protocol Exchange. And um, I have to say I'm not affiliated or neither of us at the Quest Center is affiliated with, with uh, Protocols IO, nor do we receive any benefits. But we really believe it's one of the best platforms out there for protocol uh, deposits because it's interactive and dynamic and has really unique features uh, that no other platform has. Uh, which is copying and forking from existing protocols. So you can build on other people's protocols that you find in, in there. And uh, what is also really unique is that um, you can share your protocol openly without any extra costs and also accessing uh, um, any protocol that is shared is also free. So it's really perfect to uh, contribute and to find also what uh, you're looking for and see what is out there in your field. Uh, they receive a DOI, so you can use this as a reference in publications and also create different uh, access levels of the protocols. So would you like to share this privately with one person, with a group or open with others? plus many other things and one of the great things it works in any web browser uh, on any device so there's no app needed uh, or installation or to fiddle around with and um, yeah to all the later things we get uh, uh, soon so then you say like well it's free uh, but where's the catch well um, the catch is in the um, model that uh, um, the protocols I hold have because, I mean, they have to maintain the platform and it costs money. So initially, if you sign up, uh, there is only a limit on five private protocols plus a web space of 100 megabytes. And uh, if you use uh, video content, for instance, this is uh, taken up very soon. But the good news is, like, if you refer uh, somebody, you get one more protocol. And also, if you share your protocol, it doesn't count towards your uh, private protocols. So again, to encourage uh, contributing to the platform. Um, but ideal, of course, is if your institution has uh, bought a license as the Charité BIH did, for instance. Um, and so everyone in your institution uh, can take advantage of it and comes with many other great uh, uh, um, yeah, features and, and benefits. Um, so individual and uh, group plans are not really cheap. So uh, what is then really the, the general structure? Uh, you uh, aside sort of like from the logical steps that, that you have in any protocol, you have a sections about uh, warnings. Uh, so um, where specific safety aspects are highlighted. Uh, material section uh, where you list just um, all the materials and reagents that are needed. So um, I refer to our um, session where we talk about our IDs. So this is where they come in handy and where you can provide them in addition, for instance, to catalog numbers or even as substitutes. Um, you have a metadata section where you have uh, specific links to share uh, uh, for DOIs, for PDFs. Uh, the license is uh, available and uh, also the status, whether your protocol is complete or whether it's in development and also uh, the citations that are used, plus metrics, of course. So how often has it been viewed? Uh, how is it bookmarked? Or, uh, did your protocol has been used for some forking or comments and uh, export options? So 
uh, signing up uh, is pretty easy. Uh, you go to protocols.io and you hit the sign up button, uh, which brings you to a window where you create your account. So uh, a couple of hints here, because you see that there are uh, different options. You can either sign up with your email and create a password, uh, and that password should be uh, strong. Uh, so um, protocols.io has, uh, um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, has you uh, select a strong password so uh, with numbers and, and special characters and small and uh, uh, large letters and um, so and it won't accept anything else um, there is also other, other options as you can see you can use your google account um, and uh, also set up uh, things with your orchid uh, which is great, but uh, I recommend doing this later. Uh, the single user sign-on is not supported uh, by Charité uh, and BIH, but maybe by your institution. And uh, so um, after signing up, um, you receive um, a confirmation email and with a link, and then your account is active and you can start. So, uh, and uh, when you start, it will take you to, uh, um, um, uh, to the workspace. And here you see a snapshot of uh, my workspace, for instance, and this is basically the place where you find your organizational structure within Protocols.io. So uh, there's one uh, default workspace, um, which is a private one. You see here, that's Renee's workspace. And uh, you can, that's good, it's a good starting point for like the creation of protocols and uh, will also list uh, protocols that have been published with different colors. Uh, you can use uh, um, subfolders here, for instance, for different projects uh, where you then also keep your material or you just say like, okay, this is my folder for my media, for my videos and so on. Just however you want to be organized gives you uh, some freedom here. Um, and again, this is your private default workspace and you see uh, that I am also part of other workspaces here, uh, the Charité BIH protocols that I set up or the RDM uh, NeuroCure test working space again. Um, and that's fairly easy to set up. You just go on these three bars on top and that um, uh, gives you access to this window and then you create a new workspace where you then can des decide whether it should be open or closed and also from there invite um, other uh, people on the platform or people that you want to, to be on the platform. Okay, um, so the um, uh, workspace also gives you several options what to do with a certain protocol. So I have here uh, one uh, that has been published and if you do a right mouse click, you see everything that you can do without going and opening uh, that uh, protocol. So this could be maybe the start of where you uh, um, create a copy or a fork, or you wanna start a new version, you wanna run the protocol or share it. Um, export options, you you see it here, or, or just manage your workspace and um, or provide a link to that particular file that you want to share to somebody. So, um, and um, each double click on a protocol then gets you to the uh, away from the workspace into the protocol mode. Okay, so, but um, of course you are now at a, at a point where you actually want to start a new protocol and that's also fairly easy to be done. Uh, you just click here on new, new protocol, and then it gives you a window where you have to make your first choice. So um, they have, there are several uh, palette templates there um that you can play with and depending on your protocol you should select one so if you do like pure chemistry uh, uh with lots of reactions um, the chemistry method is uh, advisable if your um, protocol contains also uh, code for instance uh, computational workflow uh, should be advisable uh, advisable or is, is really pure biology that you're doing um, um then the biology protocol but um, I would start really with the generic protocol because that gives you also um, lots of great options. And again, um, if um, any of these appeal to you, just you know check them out and then you can see what is behind uh, these um, fits there. Okay, so after you select this, you click on create and um, this uh, brings you to the editing mode uh, of, uh, and this is the main window that you will work with. And um, I'll just quickly take you through that somewhat busy slide. 
So on top, you see basically the name of the protocol, uh, which is here called the perfect creme brulee. And you see in orange, that is again, uh, uh, right now we are in, in draft mode. And um, below that, the sections that I talked about before, the sections, uh, the steps, description, the warnings, guidelines, and materials. And you just click on these and then uh, um, you can enter uh, what uh, is uh, needed there. Below that, you have the uh, several uh, palettes that uh, you can work with. So normal things like bold and italics, I don't need to explain. But next to it, you have multimedia options. So whether you want to attach a certain file, an image uh, or, or video or link out, for instance, this is uh, uh, your um, uh, way to use these. Plus also, if you want to enter code, just uh, click on there and this will do uh, the trick. So formatting, of course, uh, is pretty clear. Uh, so you can have a table, uh, bullet points, uh, you have uh, special characters, uh, um, like mathematical equations. Uh, so just check these out. On the uh, right side, you see again these, these context windows uh, in which you can also switch from the generic uh, palette to the chemistry or computational pretty easily. And then you already see what is all behind this. For instance, I have used the amount uh, button here. And uh, what you see then in the protocol is uh, like a little sign like a flask in front of uh, the uh, um, number and again it's something that's really highlights and stands out and makes you aware that you do not overread this so i think it's a great feature and especially when running the protocol it can be really uh, useful because it gives you then the focus on these details Okay, so uh, take a little bit more time to explain uh, the, the palette on, on the left here is because this is important for your setup of your protocol. Uh, at first, you have to decide whether you want a protocol that just consists of like one section. And then you don't really need a new section because then you just have one protocol that's has a pretty straightforward and goes from one step to whatever five, six uh, there are, uh, then I would just simply start with a new step. If your protocol is somewhat longer, it's advisable to break this up into sections um, because also these sections can uh, indicate, you know, end up at uh, uh, different products, for instance, uh, or uh, use uh, switch the technique or even like an overnight step. So. Um, I think it helps people to, uh, um, you know, um, to receive your protocol better and, um, yeah, make it actually more user friendly. So, um, if sometimes, uh, uh the steps are can be really long and nobody really wants to read uh, or can comprehend really long lines. So um, if you have a step that's really long, try to uh, think about it. You can put this into several sub steps and this is what the sub, sub steps, steps are for and are great for this and then go on with the number and uh, appropriate numbering system. Sometimes there are steps where you have uh, more than one option what to do. Uh, and for this, you use the step case um, to present these options. And if you have an existing uh, word protocol, for instance, um, uh, you can use the copy paste button here and then it will uh, gives you several options how to uh, insert your protocol and already maintain this uh, structure here. Um, marking critical steps can be important. Um, and again, there's a different palette for this to indicate this uh, in, the, in the protocol and you see the options that, that you have here. So select the appropriate ones. Okay, so uh, what does the actual protocol then look like once you once you open it? And to, I have a, uh, here a finished protocol. If you click on the link, you can, can see this. And um, you see also the nice um, color coding here uh, where uh, several sections that have also different names here, if you have four, have a different uh, color code and again, make it to me at least more appealing to use this and also give you a nice overview to uh, follow. On left, you see also you can give like your protocol little image, you know, so and uh, so it's more easily recognizable. 
Uh, you also see uh, what version you're using of the protocol and also the feedback, which is can be given from any uh, registered user. And it's just one click where you say like, hey, works for me. Of course, you can also give more comments, um, but uh, that is sort of like a system, I think that uh, is pretty slick and doesn't clog up your uh, protocol too much either. Okay, then you see options. You can, of course, bookmark uh, a protocol like this that you find so that you can find it again easily later. Uh, you can run it and copy and, and, and fork it. Um, okay, so and on the, the right side, you see again what I just talked about, uh, for instance, with step four, uh, that is here divided into uh, further sub steps for one and for two, and also takes nice advantage of the figure. So run mode, what does this mean? Well, it's basically you run uh, your protocols in protocols IO alongside with your actual experiment. And uh, um, so um, that has several advantages because again, uh, you see your step uh, that you choose highlighted. You see that not so clearly in the cutout here, but you see on the right side that there is a step that is sort of like grayish here. Um, and that's sort of the, the, the highlight options here. It shows you where you are in your steps. How far along am I here? If you're, for instance, step six out of 10. And um, you, it gives you the option sort of like to, if a step failed or, or skip. Um, and also if you hit done, then it automatically takes you to the next step. So you don't have to give a whole lot of, of, of details. You really read along on your device, ideally a tablet, for instance, and then um, allows you basically to create a record. So uh, you can also see here that uh, you can uh, add uh, little notes. Uh, so if something, uh, you have an observation, um, you can enter it there. And in the end, if you have hit save, you have like a true record uh, um, of your uh, protocol run, when you started it, how long each step uh, took, uh, all the notes that, that you had, whether certain steps failed or were skipped. And it's perfect really for your electronic uh, lab notebook uh, uh, to insert this there because uh, again, it's uh, proof uh, later on what you did and also to review uh, basically uh, if something went wrong or something was different on that particular day while you run it. So um, talking a, bit, a little bit about enriching of your protocol. So uh, you might have seen this that each step and also each section sub steps have time markers. So uh, this is a great way basically to prepare somebody how long a certain step should take, for instance, um, and also for uh, the overall planning of the protocol. So um, you know whether it's better to start this before lunch break or should I maybe do this after and you don't run into time constraints. Um, so um, I would advise basically also to adjust the size of the videos and images. Uh, before you, you import them into protocols IO because there is a file size limit. Um, and um, But the actual size that is visible, then uh, you can adjust in protocols IO nicely and you can add also figure legends. And um, you see again the critical steps that we talked about that certain things uh, like temperatures, for instance, are then highlighted and stand out. So sometimes it's necessary to create a new version or you just had basically your text version so far published and then decide uh, it needs a new video or needs some pictures, for instance. Um, so uh, you want to know at the end uh, how are these versions different, for, especially if you keep a log of your protocol um, that is developing. So. Um, um, you have the, the options here uh, also to compare and also to merge certain protocols so or versions uh, together, which is can be uh, suitable for some of you. And uh, but here I use the, the compared uh, uh, mode. And uh, um, so on the on the left side you see the old protocol, and on the right side uh, the new protocol, and uh, things that have been removed are highlighted on in, in red things that have been added uh, to the uh, new version are then uh, highlighted in green. So again, using the color uh, coding again to guide you nicely to see uh, the differences. 
So when it's all done, your protocol is complete and enriched as you want this, it, it can be published. And uh, you should really think about uh, uh, um, yeah, contributing again to the community and um, yeah, make your protocol available also to receive feedback and uh, maybe there can be the start of new collaborations as well. So uh, check whether uh, um, all sections are complete. Um, your materials should have RIDs. And if you don't know what these are, I referred to the RID section in our video channel. Please also have a short abstract, uh, what uh, your protocol is all about and where it's been used. And um, if you use papers or other protocol parts, uh, please use a proper acknowledgement. Also, if you have not developed uh, this protocol alone, but together with others, please add their co-author information and also uh, um, provide them uh, with uh, a copy of the protocol before publishing. And do not include figures, tables, uh, or discussion sections from papers uh, unless you are uh, um, the owner of, of the protocol and have a, a CC BY license. So we often get the questions, well, well what's with intellectual property? Really, um, I, I'm not sort of the first person to do uh, um, an ELISA or um, an in-situ hybridization. So um, I don't, people feel like they don't really own uh, the protocol or I really have the rights to say like, hey, this is my protocol. But um, um, recipes and cookbooks are really not uh, subject to uh, copyright. Uh, um, they are really statements of fact or simple instructions. And if these instructions are in themselves uh, are not copyrighted, um, therefore really these uh, protocol steps and materials can be published outside of an original uh, journal uh, in a protocol um, repository like this and be shared under a certain license. Again, uh, providing also the proper acknowledgement. Okay. so. Your protocol is published. Uh, what could be the next step? Well, um, you could go one step farther and consider really uh, if it's a novel method, uh, for instance, and you have proof of concept data or you're about to obtain it to publish a protocol, a lab protocol paper in plus one. And we also have a section in our channel that talks about that. And um, when it's published, you can use this perfectly in the method section uh, of your future papers um, and also add uh, this to the reference list. Um, it's great to include uh, um, a link of your protocol, for instance, in grant applications because it enhances the transparency and also shows that you have mastered a certain technology. And um, also, uh, um, uh, you can include uh, a link in a corresponding data deposit. Uh, and uh, so you show with which method uh, this, these data were created and also increase the reproducibility with this. So of course, this can be only the start uh, of this, and there are lots and lots of things more to talk about, more details uh, of uh, protocols IO and uh, what you can do or create uh, uh, content here. So I refer to uh, the, the webinars uh, um, of protocols IO. And there's also a protocol entry service. So you have a protocol and you just don't have the time uh, or cannot really uh, see sort of how this should work uh, in, in protocols IO and want to see this. So there, there's a way to, to do this, especially for the BIA charity users. They have uh, um, one free uh, protocol to uh, be entered here. And um, also uh, they have a great uh, help section, uh, for instance, especially if you want to start a new protocol or again, um, very useful, a protocol on how to create a new protocol that is constantly updated um, and present you uh, the protocol cre creation with the latest internal version of uh, the protocols IO software. And also the quest center of uh, the BIH has a, a protocols IO service site since we uh, maintain currently a premium license. And uh, yeah, click on this uh, and you find also more tutorial videos and a webinar that was specifically recorded. 
And um, if you really consider using this for your institution or even like for your group and want, uh, for instance, a demo uh, from somebody who is an expert on it from Protocols IO, you can also request a demo. So uh, again, uh, I know the people, they are really helpful and we'll get in contact with you and provide this. So, and again, I used uh, uh, the uh, creme brulee here as an example. And if you are uh, um, a chef or like to cook, then check this out. So here's the reference for this, just for fun. And uh, well, that's the end of the presentation. And um, uh, thank you very much.